Hey guys, in this video we are going to be designing and making our own latch hook rug. To do this, I used a latch hook, a ride tie rug mesh, a little over a skein of black yarn, and less than a skein of gray yarn. I also used scrap cardboard to make a template to cut the yarn, scissors and or a box cutter, a rubber band, some glue, and a needle and thread. So let's get into it. So first things first, I counted three squares in on each side and drew a border so that I have enough to weave in on the bottom and then taped the edges so that it doesn't come undone. Then to get this diamond pattern, I started by choosing one corner and took the very diagonal, the very middle diagonal stitch all the way to the other side and then made a line that is five squares wide going diagonally all the way across. Then I just did that with every single corner, went all the way across in a diagonal pattern, and ended up with this square diamond in the middle. Then I counted how many stitches down the square was and did that same thing to this side here, which mine is 18 squares long. So I counted down 18 squares and made another stitch here and just again made diagonal marks five squares wide for each square and then you can just make squares off of that as you go. So I brought you guys in a little closer just to show you exactly what I meant. So here is the middle square of my whole rug that was made when I did all of the corners. So all I did was counted from the very top middle one here down to here, which in my case is one, two, three. I'm also talking about this cross one here that is still white. I'm talking about the cross ones down. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So when I come over here, I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And so there's still a white one after it. I'm going to color that one black. So then I'm going to go up diagonal 1, color it black, keep going up diagonal, coloring that one black. I'm only doing two colors on my rug, that's why I'm doing black and leaving the other white. If you're doing more than one color, of course, make your colors different colors. So then now that I have my one line here, I can just count over one, two, three, four, and five, and that's how wide I have been making my lines. So one, two, three, four, and five, and again that is just diagonal on the other side. So once you have that established. You can just do it that way. And then color it in in the middle. And that is how you make one of the squares. So now I'm going to show you guys how I made my latch hook pieces of yarn. Here I have a piece of cardboard and I have measured out two and a half inches and one and a quarter inch because that is half of two and a half inches. So I'm just going to cut it out on this line here at the two and a half inch line. Once you have that done, I do have a line in the middle of mine because I am going to cut mine in half to make two of these and that is because they do wear out just a little bit so if you'd like to make two also I would suggest doing so. Okay, so once you have those I would suggest doing this with box cutter because the second part here we are just going to cut through the top layer of cardboard.
then we are just going to glue them together in the middle and you can use regular Elmer, Elmer's glue or hot glue either one obviously hot glue is a little bit faster if you use Elmer's glue just stick something on top of them for a few minutes and let them sit when your piece of cardboard is set in you will just cut two little notches in the end or near the end just to hold your yarn in and do that on both ends on the same side of the cardboard that way all of your pieces of yarn will be the exact same size so now the last thing that we are going to do with this piece of cardboard is on the same side that you did the two notches on one of these sides we are going to actually knock in all of these things that make the cardboard so just to give you a closer look we're just knocking these down just like that all the way to the end okay and now I will show you why we just did that you will now put your yarn in the notch and wrap it somewhat loosely around once you have that all wrapped up you will just cut this somewhat closely like that and then I like to put a rubber band around it, just like this, to hold it all there while you're cutting it. And then this is why we made that little gap underneath or in between that cardboard, so that we actually have a space to stick our scissors and cut this yarn. like that. And you can take it off and you have all of your latch hook strings. When you have some pieces of yarn ready to put on your rug, you will grab your hook and grab your yarn and fold it in half just like that. Insert your hook into the loop and put your hook around the space that you want it like this. Make sure that that extra piece of the hook gets through also and bring it back over that space like that so it starts to bring it up. Put your pieces of yarn into that space so that it grabs it and pull it through that loop. Then you can tighten it and do that over and over and over. As I have my pattern here, I will follow it with my two different colors. When you're done putting all of the yarn on your rug, you will rough up your yarn a little bit. Kind of comb it the other way finally. And then we are just going to trim our yarn to be the same length. So if there are any pieces of yarn that are sticking up much further than the, than the other ones, you're just going to want to clip those ones off and give your rug a little haircut. So I'm going to go ahead and do that all over my rug. 
Okay, when you have all of your yarn cut as evenly as you can, you will bind the back of your rug. So I have somewhat started here already just to make it easier on the both of us. So all we are going to do is fold over the one edge and then the other to make this square on the very corner. Then you will take your binding and line it up pretty much to the edge of this one here and right along the edge of this one. And I just anchored it down here already with thread and needle. And then we are just going to go along this bottom edge here and make sure to get the bottom canvas, the middle canvas, and the binding in this. It is to, nice to do a running back stitch so that you go back a little bit um, past the stitch that you just did and go in front of it then. And you will want to go about an inch in between each stitch, making sure not to catch your yarn and thread in the process. Okay, so I have made it all the way to the next corner making sure that my thread came out right at the corner of the binding and the canvas. So now we're going to go down this other side. So we're going to bring the binding back exactly the way we just came from, making sure that it's all straight along both corners. And we're just gonna hold that there and bring this down the other edge, exactly where we would want it to go. And that makes a nice corner for us, lining this up in a perfect 90 degree angle, as you can see. And then we will just place a few stitches in the corner right here to keep this in place. So I placed one there really quick, and then as I said, you will just go down this next edge, making sure it lines up all the way down, and doing the same thing on each corner. When we get back to the corner that we started on, you can either bring your binding right up to the edge that we started on and sew it in flat like that, or you can continue to do one more corner like we have been doing and make four uniform corners and end it a little later on with a flat edge like this, which is what I like to do. So now I'm just gonna continue sewing the same way that I've been along this flat edge here and then along the inside of the binding to connect this edge to our rug also. Okay, we've made it to the first corner where we have this flap still in need to sew down this corner. So I've made it so my thread comes out right in the stitch below where my corner meets. And I'm just gonna start going through both sides of the binding and a nice even stitch all the way down. Okay, when you get done, that is what it will look like and your corner will now be tied down on both sides. So I just went ahead and tied a few knots right here and I'm just gonna poke this back through this little area here. You can honestly just poke it out anywhere and snip that off. So it hides that in there for you. So now I am going to go ahead and do the same thing on every corner and every edge all the way around the rug back until the beginning. And that's all there is to it. So I hope that that was enjoyable for you guys. I hope that it was helpful and I hope you guys go on to create many more things. And I will see you guys in the next video.